Greetings, Commanders. This is Commander Atlas Ren. I wanted to do a short video, as usual, uh, as a retrospective of the first week of Power Play 2. I think a lot of us had confusion during Power Play. Some of us still do. Uh, there were a lot of new elements. There were certainly quite a few old elements as well. And uh, now that a week's gone by and we've seen some progress happen, some systems change hands, um, I wanted That's to on. chime in on that. So let me park at the Stronghold Carrier, which incidentally, um, if people are not aware, the Stronghold Carrier exists in systems that are strongholds. Amazing, right? Uh, so let me park on this thing. Quest stacking. There we go. And the Stronghold Carrier serves a couple of purposes. One is it provides a location for people um, fighting it. So if you go to an enemy system that has a Stronghold Carrier, uh, that location is a very good location if you want to do some PvE because you get merits for fighting ships that are coming out of the Stronghold Carrier. Stronghold Carrier actually launches fighters, which is pretty cool. So you can fight those fighters. And also, for the local side, the Stronghold Carrier is sort of a, a mini Jameson Memorial. It's a, uh, it's a giant store that carries most, if not all, products. And for the... Um, uh, for uh, Lee Yong Ru, with his discount, there's actually 15% discount on every single item sold. So, in this system, the Stronghold Carrier, for those that are pledged to Lee Yong Ru, is actually like going to Jameson Memorial, but instead of getting 10% discount, you get 15% discount. So, it's actually even a better deal. So we can take a look real quick. It's got 32 ships available. We don't care about the cheap ones. Let's go to the expensive side and look at the pricing and then compare this to what the pricing is normally or locally. So you can get an Anaconda for 124,000, Type 10 for 106, Beluga for 71, Type 9 for 65, Python Mark II for 57. Uh, where's the uh, da, 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 Type 8 for 32? Crates. Crates such a underpriced ship, although it's not really needed anymore. Uh, and then if we go back here, look at how cheap the Mandalay is. It's under 15 million. So obviously the ship is only available to me because I purchased it with ARCs, and that allows you to also buy as many as you want in the stores. But um, this should be the same price once it's released to everybody, and uh, that is a great deal for the Mandalay because the Mandalay is a lot more than just a, uh, a exploration ship. It's actually, it, it's it's a multi-role ship in a lot of ways. So you can put six guns on there if you want. All right, but um, the thing that I want to check in the store are the uh, the weapons. The, the, there's one set of weapons, guns, that are called, I think, Concord Cannons or something like that. I want to take a look because, uh, obviously, they're new to the game. I've never had them, and you can only unlock them. And now that I've got um, enough points to unlock them, I want to see what they are. So, I don't even know which category they're in. Um... Okay, so the pacifiers there. Uh, obviously, they're not mining. Okay, um, just take a look real quick here. So I have the mining lance here. That's another unlockable. And the uh, pack counts are unlocked as well. Rocket protect. I've never used these, unlike those as well. Those are for, I think, um, preventing people from jumping out in uh, in warp, so you, you rocket them so they don't leave. 
Probably more of a PvP thing. Multi cannons, advanced multi cannons, enforcer cannon. Yeah, so this is a new one. So it is a multi cannon. Um, where is this not a new one? Have I just not used it? <laughs> it's a multi cannon variant that's been adapted to utilize large caliber rounds, which deal more damage over a greater range. No, I think this is old, actually. I think these have been around, but I have never used them. I, I did not have them previously. I never bothered going to whoever you get them from. Okay, so. Uh, let's see. Right, multi cannons, plasma. Uh, so, cannons, maybe? Concord cannon. Here we go. So, what is a Concord cannon? And variant sacrifices damage per shot to achieve more effective three round burst. Oh, well, that's actually not all that interesting. So, it's a three round burst cannon. And um, how are the stats? So 17 damage per second, 15.9. So you lose about, uh, so you lose just over one. So that's about 7% less damage, roughly. But it goes faster, 1300 meters per second, rather than 1000 meters per second. Raider fires faster, 1.1 per second versus 0.5 per second. Yeah, that's always been the problem with the cannons is that they're slow. They're slow to, to shoot in their rate of fire, and they're slow in terms of the round actually getting to target. So this addresses that. Uh, burst rate of 4 per second. Uh, ammo clip size, even though it's actually a magazine, not a clip, it's 9. And... 300 rounds instead of 120 rounds. So that's definitely a difference. This shoots, it has three three round bursts out of one magazine. This will shoot six individual shots out of one magazine. Well, you're going to use up the 300 faster, I think, than the uh, 120, but you're probably going to do a little more damage with that. Kinetic, kinetic, 3500 fall off. Yep, yep. So that's all the same. Um, and how big can you get these Concord cannons? Okay, just one size. So they're size twos. Interesting. Well, I'm going to buy it, not because I'll ever use it, but just to test fire it. Um, and I'm putting it on a ship that obviously... All right, a bunch of chattering in there. I know that drives some people crazy. When there's more than one voice and one, more than one AI voice talking, I've just kind of gotten used to it, and uh, I've just been too lazy to tweak the settings so that they're not overlapping each other. It's two different programs doing it, and I can, I think, tweak it so that uh, there's a little delay when it speaks so that they don't overlap each other. And I will do a video, I promise, on all the different out-of-game software that you can use with the game, and there's a lot. Uh, there's probably over 100 different programs that have been written to work with the game. Um, so I use, I think, four, four, maybe five, which is probably four or five more than most people. But um, And out of those, I think three of them talk. So uh, I kind of like to have that crew simulation feel. Anyway, I put one of these Concord cannons on. Um, I'll try and find something to shoot. But my guess is it's a pretty crappy cannon like most cannons are except for the multi cannons those are good uh, all right let me before i forget let me set a new fire group just for that there we go and uh i might as well do a beam laser for that now the other thing i wanted to look in here um and i may do more in-depth videos on this stuff so oh yeah i leveled up guys um I unlocked a bunch of stuff. I worked my ass off doing exactly what I showed in the videos on the best way to do power play. So let's go to power play. I'm in uh, Lee Young Ru. We already knew that. Okay, so nothing new here, which is good. First of all, I was hoping that the weekly assignments was just for the first week and not 
every week because I don't want to be told what to do every week. I just want to do stuff I like. So it, it looks like that was just the first week event. And now you're free to do whatever you want to earn. What is my current rank, my loyalty? Well, it's 118. So I have fully unlocked 100 ranks. And then I went 18 above and beyond that. And uh, I know some people are like, whoa, how can you do that? I'm sure the, uh, the game doesn't really intend for you to be able to do 100 levels in one week. But I just happen to have vacation time. So hopefully you can figure out how that works. Um, so there's a lot of hours spent in the game to grind out to get here. And I, I still will call it grind because it's repetitive, but it was also enjoyable because I was talking to people on Discord the entire time. So I'm at uh, 921,000 merits. I'm basically about two hours short of a million merits. Um, yeah, so that's a lot. And that gave me a bunch of stuff, uh, including one thing I will point out, um, because most people probably haven't gotten here. You know how you get mini care packages all throughout the ranks? So when you get to 100, or actually 101, that changes to care package instead of a mini care package. I'll show you what the difference is. Um, let me go back here. And then, of course, leaderboard. Oh, look at that. I'm in the top spot. Number one in uh, Li Yong Ru. So I'm at rank 118 with 921,000 merits. Um, did not ever see this person or talk to him that got to level 115. This guy I talked to. So um, he's in third place. He was dropping off packages while I was on and we were talking to each other a little bit uh, in Discord. Never saw this guy, never talked to him, never talked to this person, never talked to this person. And the reason I, I bring this up is because I I decided this time around to get a little more active in Discord with the faction that I'm in. There's a Discord for every single uh, power, not faction, power. Uh, so 12 different Discords for the 12 different powers. And if you would like to really enjoy doing power play and strategize and plan and all work towards the same goal, join a Discord. And I will have links to Discord, uh, different servers in this video. And I'll probably also make a separate video on uh, uh, different Discord servers and exactly like what they're looking for and how to maximize being a good player within the power play structure. But I uh, just wanted to show you, uh, obviously I'm bragging a little bit here, but also uh, not really bragging because it meant I didn't have a life and I was spending my vacation doing this instead. But so be it. Um, but it does mean I unlocked absolutely everything. Now, um, what else I was going to look at? Oh, yeah. Uh, if we go to our contact, our power contact, and there's a power contact in every single system um, but in your stronghold systems you can also uh, get I'll show you the care packages too you can also pick up these allocated resources and these are things that are used to uh, essentially it's merits they they will put merits for your side in enemy systems so when you're undermining a system you would first come here or any of the strongholds. And then, like in, in this uh, particular power, the you would pick up serious franchise packets because the serious Li Yong Ru is all about the mercantile side. It's not really a warring faction. It's a faction that uses the free market, uses capitalism to uh, get systems to join them. That's That's the kind of the lore way of doing it. But essentially for every power, you have an equivalent of these and you just hit, you come here, you hit collect. Now at rank one, you're allowed to pick up 15 of these at one time. And I think it resets every 10 minutes or maybe every 30 minutes. Um, I didn't wait long enough to find out. 
but 15 initially. And then as you go up in your rank, you can pick up more. So at rank 100, uh, the maximum that you can pick up is 250 at a time. So if I wanted to go and help my power take over uh, somebody else's system, then I would fill up my cargo with 250 of these, fly out to one of the border systems, but a border system that is owned by somebody uh, else, by one of the other powers, and then unload these 250 in their system, and then that would add 250 essentially for our side, um, for our power to be undermining one of their uh, locations. And you, the way that undermining works is you, you have to you have to have more pledges from your side than the number of pledges that they've put in to defend the system. Uh, and there's also a like the the stronger a system is to begin with, the more merits or it's going to take more of these. Uh, uh, what are they calling them? Allocated resources, as well as other ways to do that, like fighting, the more it's going to take to flip the system over to your side. Uh, I'm still just trying to figure all those things out and talking to people that are doing more of the, the pew pew stuff. I was doing, I was a delivery guy. I was really a space trucker for the most part. But uh, I am looking forward to doing a little more of the pew pew as well. And once I do, once I know exactly what that entails, I will get that info for you guys as well. The power injection malware and tracker malware, these are both utilized for on-foot um, on foot combat, uh, on-foot. It's, it's essentially a way to still get um, merits for your power while you're on bases on foot. So you... I guess, upload the malware. Again, I haven't done this. I was just doing space trucking. Uh, but you upload the malware to different terminals that you can find. I was talking to one guy yesterday, and uh, he said in the resort he was able to have six different terminals, or maybe it was eight terminals, that he could upload this to. And doing some rough math, we figured out yesterday that uh, he was able to do about 3,000, or no, about 4,500 merits per hour if he's just constantly going and uploading malware on foot. And it doing space trucking, it took about 12 to 15 minutes to do the same amount of merits. So you can see why I was doing space trucking. It was the most efficient way of getting merits. But... Doing 250 of these at a time definitely helps you move a lot more things quickly. Uh, the other thing that I found out, or I, I, I mean, I kind of knew this, but I realized, is that the Type 8, and really in a lot of ways the Mandalay as well, but really the Type 8 is an ideal ship for... Uh, if you want to do power play, for doing power play. It is big enough that you can configure it to haul 320 units of cargo. It doesn't have to carry that much if you're not going to be ever hauling that much, but it can actually carry 320 very comfortably. I think it can push even a little bit beyond that, but 320 with a shield, with you know everything else that you would want, and very comfortably. Uh, and I'll, I'll I'll actually show you the way that this one's set up. Um, you don't actually need tar points. I just left these on because they were already there anyway, and we just added the Concord cannon. <clears throat> Pretty basic setup here, just a heat sink because this thing will overheat. It is not great at heat. Uh, one shield booster because my shield size is pretty small. So and it also came with a booster, so I left it on there. Uh, same thing for point defense, frame shift wake scanner so that I can also scan planets as I'm flying around. It's kind of a multi-role ship in that regard. Everything A-rated here except for the life support and the sensors as normal for non-combat ships. And then for optional, cargo, cargo, cargo. This gets me 320 units. 
a size five fuel scoop, which it came with, um, which is plenty. It's not quite as fast as six or seven, obviously, but it's plenty quick. Size five shield generator. Again, it came with it, so I left it in there. I'll probably replace it <clears throat> with a uh, prismatic since now I've locked prismatics as well. Uh, now, the one thing I did is I put a size four guardian frame shift booster. Most people actually put a size five in one of these slots. But the difference between size four and size five is one and a quarter light years. And by putting in size four here, I was able to still have both a size five shield and a size five fuel scoop. I really didn't want to have a size four fuel scoop. There's quite a bit of difference in how fast they are. And I also didn't really want to go down to a size four shield. Although if you're doing prismatic, that might be an option is do a prismatic size four Incidentally, um, and I, I'll mention this in other videos probably at some time, but I'm just throwing a bunch of random facts out there. <clears throat> Prismatic shields consume more power than regular shields, but they provide the same amount of uh, shield protection as the next size up standard shield. So like a size four Prismatic would be almost identical to a size five regular shield in terms of how much shielding protection it provides. So, uh, and both prismatic and regular shields can be modified to be reinforced. Now this one I did low draw, I don't even, oh, that because, no, I did that, they didn't do that. I don't know why I did low draw. Oh, it was for the weight, that's what it was. So I'm actually, by doing low draw, it's about 20% less power, but also about 20% less shielding protection as well. Uh, so going from, uh, from yeah, so if I put a size five prismatic shield in here, it'll be equivalent to a size six regular shield in terms of its protection. And um, I could also still do a low draw prismatic. And a low draw prismatic, is still going to be more protection than a normal non-low draw um, size five shield. So anyway, I got some thinking to do there, but for the basic setup without <clears throat> without using prismatics, I just put a size four guardian frame shift booster in there and only lost one and a quarter light years. And then of course, super cruise assist, advanced docking, and the, for a cargo ship, these two are a must for Military ships, for Thargoid ships, I'll usually not have these in there. Or if I have one, it's only going to be the Super Cruise Assist. Because Super Cruise Assist lets me get to places faster. As you, I did a video on how to use that, where it'll actually pull you out of warp faster than you could possibly do it on your own. Um, so that's the basic setup. No vehicles, obviously. And I believe the Type 8, for anyone that didn't buy it with ARX, is going to become available later this month, uh, just in-game. And it's a very nice size ship. Um, in a lot of ways, uh, if your focus is more on hauling, it's better than the, the old standby, which was the um, Python Mark 1, because of Super Cruise Overdrive as well. It is really good in super cruise overdrive it's very fast and it uses way less fuel than uh ships that weren't designed for super cruise overdrive all right well let's real quick launch here because this video is now no longer short i keep saying short and then i go for 25 minutes but hey uh the average view time from you guys is about six minutes so nobody actually watches the whole video so uh i guess it doesn't even matter how long it is because no one's gonna watch the whole thing anyway Yes, yes. Now, let's see. Uh, I want to shoot something. So let's go to, uh, oops, let's see what we have. We may not have anything to shoot at. Hmm. Yeah, I was hoping there's a, <clears throat> a system with rings where we can shoot some stuff. Well, Let's see what this gun looks like anyway. Uh, 
Concord cannon. Switch. A ship is performing a cargo scan on us. Deploying weapons. All right, weapons deployed. Okay, so it shoots a triple. Okay, now I can't shoot. There, shot again. I'm gonna keep clicking nonstop. So this is how fast it shoots if you just keep clicking. Boy, it's not super accurate either. Look at how much those shots are spreading. Yeah, I think this is a fairly worthless. I don't even need to kill anything to see that this is a fairly worthless uh, instrument. Yeah, my beam laser is the one that's stationary. The Concord cannon is the one that's bouncing all over the place. And each shot does, uh, what was it, uh, 15 or 20% less damage than the um, regular cannon. What? I mean, out of range. Why am I not shooting? Let me go to ship. Put this at uh, forward fire. Is this gonna? Oh, thermal overload. That's why I'm not firing. Okay. Had nothing in the weapons because this is a cargo vessel, so it doesn't need anything in the weapons. All right. So, laser. Oh my god, this thing is horrible. <laughs> Oh, I feel so sorry for the people that picked uh, the new power play person. What was her name? Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the new one that they just released. Nakato Kane. Because I think a lot of people picked Nakato Kane because they wanted to get access to this cannon because it's brand new and it is horrible. I mean... Obviously, I haven't actually shot anything with it. I'm just shooting out in, into the the space here. But you can see how inaccurate this thing is. It is really inaccurate. There's a lot of bouncing. Like if I have, uh, if I have a ship with one of the um, like frag cannons or something, something that has a large dispersion, I think it would have about the same dispersion as this thing has with three shots yeah you'd have to be so close to consistently hit with the dispersion that this has yeah the laser so where the laser is going is where i'm targeting look at where these shots would end up yep never gonna use it so there you go there's your sneak peek at the new weapon that you you get with any of the powers but you get it fastest with the um uh with that new power nakano and and i think now people <laughs> once some people start unlocking it they're gonna realize that they made a mistake and you need to get to i believe level 33 with her which is a third of the way to 100. That's like uh, 33 is, I think, 220 or 230,000 merits. That's a lot of merits to do to unlock a weapon that is so inaccurate. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you really would be better off using a, a frack cannon, I think. Uh, but let me know if you guys unlock this and uh, you actually like it. Uh, let me know, because I don't think I'm ever going to use this thing. Even though I unlocked it, I'll probably just fly back right now to the Stronghold Carrier and sell it, because I, I will have no use for it. All right, guys, so <clears throat> sorry about the length of the video one more time. Uh, not uh, I always intend these to be like five-minute videos, and a lot of them drag out to about 20. If you're still listening to this, obviously you enjoyed watching it, so give me a thumbs up. Uh, I will catch you in the next one.